We are here in Yellowstone National Park and we are about to start an eight day trek into the thoroughfare section of the park. Um, I've had my, my mind on this for years and uh, this is far and away, if everything goes according to plan, will be our biggest trip we've ever done by far. This is absolute big game country. I think our mileage is anywhere from, you know, like 70 to 90, depending on what goes on. We may have to change things up. Um, but this is top-notch grizzly country, and uh, we're really going to be on our game. This is Yellowstone Lake in the background. We're starting at Nine Mile Trailhead, and today we're going to 5E6. But first, some liquid courage. Woo! Let's do it! Some things that I didn't really talk about at the start of the video. We are in a very big rush. Um, it's after three. We started, I think we started right around three o'clock. Um, we got to do anywhere from eight to nine miles, I think, today. And we also got some weather moving in. Got a, I think it's a grouse. There it is. This is uh, the first time we've seen for any campsites along this trail. Uh, 5e8 and 5e9 here on the lake shore. The lake is right over there. Um, but we are going to continue up this way. We're at 5e6. We have finally made it. We made a good time. Just did uh, I don't know, eight and a half miles and uh, about three hours. Well, look at this spot. Firing right on the lake. The lake shore down there. Food prep. There, food pole. Oh, we gotta find a place to set up tent too. Okay, so this uh, got a fire going here at night one, and uh, it got dark in a hurry. We gotta cook, uh, get the tarp set up. I'm not sure if that's gonna last the night if uh, strong winds come in, which I think they're supposed to. Uh, this is it. First night in uh, Yellowstone. See what happens. There's a loon out there. Hasn't made any noise yet, but you can tell it's a loon. I think we can officially say we beat the rain on our first day, first campsite, first night. I heard it sprinkle a little bit last night, but that's it. Uh, which is great because it was supposed to downpour. Now there's a lot of weather in the forecast today. Heavy rain, uh, potentially thunderstorms and snow. We'll see what happens.
some type of animal bone here on the trail. Right by this meadow. There's a bison. It's blocking the trail. God, he's humongous. The bison up here blocking the trail. We're kind of in desperate need of a break anyway, because he's just standing there. So this could be a while. <laughs> Having big troubles with this bison. We took about an hour break and he didn't move at all. So then we went off trail and tried to go around him. Uh, at which point I came face to face with him. We spooked each other and basically ran in opposite directions. <laughs> uh, at least now he's moving. We've been following this guy for at least a mile. He's uh, taking the same trail as us. Hopefully he's not staying at the same campsite. He's certainly taking his time. I guess all three of us are taking five right now. We did it. We finally got around that buffalo. Uh, he did not want to let us pass him. There is our first look at the thoroughfare, which is basically the drainage that comes out of the southern part of the Yellowstone Lake right back that way. I think those are four sandhill cranes at the center of the shot. Could be way wrong. But man, it's starting to get beautiful out here. It. It's the end of Yellowstone Lake. We just hiked down the entire east side. This is basically the thoroughfare here that begins. If you look down there in the mud closest to us right there, you can see a ton of animal tracks. This is just the wildest place in America right here. And we have made it to our spur trail for 5e1, 300 yards that way. All right, so things have finally settled down. A fire going, amazing spot here at 5e1. Uh, a lot happened today. Uh, there was a lot of rain. I mean, we spent probably uh, at least a mile or two uh, basically hiking with a bison. It wasn't even like a bison sighting. It was like we were just hiking with him. Um, we first uh, came upon him on the trail and we stopped. Uh, we waited a while and then we realized he wasn't moving. So we just took our lunch break early. Uh, and we took a break for about an hour. After that, we go up the trail a little bit, we realize he hasn't moved. Um, at which point we tried to go off trail and go around him. Uh, went off trail, because he was pretty much still at the time. I went to a point where I thought I was gonna get in front of him. Apparently he moved up and then went into the brush or something, because I went through some thick brush and boom, he was right there face to face. He's probably five feet from me. And this dude was huge. He looked like he was like six or seven feet at the shoulder. Um, and spooked both of us at the same time. I immediately turned around, went the other way. I was like, oh my God, I'm way too close. He uh, bolted. Uh, so I felt bad that I scared him like that. But he took off up the trail. And from that moment on, he wasn't really standing on the trail anymore. He started just walking. Um, and we would stay, you know, maybe we, we tried to stay maybe like a hundred yards behind. Uh, but every now and then we want to keep an eye on him so we d wouldn't lose him in case he goes into the brush and then we walk right by him and he comes right out. But it was just a ridiculous experience to be hiking behind this huge bison for so long.
sun has come out and it's beautiful. We're by the fire, drying a million things out, cooking, dealing with uh, foot problems. Day two. There's Maggie. She hasn't been featured much. Uh-uh. There's the boots, shoes, everything, socks, drying out. Absolutely amazing spot here. I already heard coyotes. So this will do it for night number two. Good morning. It is day three. This view is incredible. We're hearing uh, elk bugling all night long. We lucked out with some sun, we were able to drive everything off, uh, had breakfast. Uh, Maggie's basically still hibernating in the tent. All right, last thing to go in the bag, wet clothing. Dry, dry, it's like 97% dry. All right, so we're finally packed up. Uh, I think it's like one o'clock, it's pretty late. We're gonna see some storm clouds back there, great. But anyways, like one o'clock, I think we have maybe like seven miles, as a guess, uh, down to 6C3. So, um, onward. First crossing of the day. So we just ran into our first person. Um, and since we started, Tom from Portland, he's out here doing a 13 day trip. Um, and he's done this a few times. He told me that one time he was up at Mariposa Lake and he ran into somebody who was coming down, going the opposite way, who was apparently in the middle of a 150 mile trek. Anyways, I just uh, did this whole bit and then I realized I wasn't recording. So <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing. <laughs> so I just said this word for word again. Anyways, uh, here we go. This is a heavy pack. When I first started out, it was 52 pounds. This is it. I think we're officially in the thoroughfare. You can see behind Maggie there is the mountains. This is absolutely prime time grizzly habitat. Thick uh, willow. This is why you really shouldn't be hiking at dawn or dusk. So there's added pressure to get to your campsite on time. <laughs> That guy Tom also told us that he saw what he thought was a grizzly bear um, at the site that we stayed at our first night, 5e6, along the lake shore. So as far as the rest of the itinerary goes, what? Um, we've already done two nights. Uh, so we're staying at 63 tonight, which is right in the thoroughfare. And we're in it now, but that's like in the heart of it. And then the next night, uh, we're staying at 6Y6, which is, I don't know, like five miles from there. So we're kind of just hanging around uh, the area. 6Y6 has a uh, you know, big reviews, so that should be nice. And then after that, we got a big day. Uh, that's our elevation day. We're hiking up to Mariposa Lake. It might be a couple thousand uh, feet of elevation gain. And it's going to be pretty cold. No fires allowed. And then after that, I think we're doing about a 13-mile day uh, up over Two Ocean Plateau. Uh, that is not frequently traveled and we'll be staying on the southeast arm of Yellowstone Lake at 6A3 where there is a pit toilet. I'm looking forward to that and also a, uh, a bear box and that's if we make it there because this is a few days from now and things are subject to change and then after that we will be traveling uh, uh, east to link up uh, where we are basically right now um, this area right here and then retracing our steps and staying one night on uh, Yellowstone Lake and then continuing the rest of the way. So our final three days, or one, two, three, our final four days are all over 10 miles, anywhere from like 10 to 15. I'm watching for Maggie's reaction. She seems to be in a sad trance. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Just looking back from where we came. Wow, some loud elk down here. It's somehow getting wilder. Oh, there's like six grouse in here. You can hear them taking off. <laughs> yeah, there's like, oh, there he goes. Well, that was hopefully our last river crossing. Uh, and then I think the campsite is like a quarter mile from here. It's amazing out here, by the way. Look at this background. Woo! Incredible. I was trying to get a shot of the river, but I'm instead just going to film Maggie putting on her pack because you could hear it anyways. <laughs> so, shot of the river plus Maggie struggling to put on her pack that's twice as big as her. Yep, we see the river. Now... Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh oh. She almost fell backwards. Oh boy. One day we'll look on back on all this and laugh. Yeah. This is wild. Uh, it feels like we're hiking through the Serengeti. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. This is uh, probably the best grizzly bear habitat in America. Maybe outside of Alaska, which we did last year. <laughs> uh, but there's just a big collection of them down here. Uh, and they don't often see people. This is the most remote section of wilderness in the continental United States. Uh, probably tomorrow will be 30 miles from any road in any direction. Uh, so in addition to grizzlies, this is also probably the best place in the world to hear wolves howling. Uh, there are tons of wolves here because there's tons of prey. There's a huge population of elk, been hearing them. There's moose, uh, there's bison. We had that issue with the bison earlier. Um, there's mountain lions, black bears, uh, there's lynx, bobcats. Just about everything that lives in America is here. Here it is. 63 on an absolutely epic meadow. I mean, I don't know how we're not gonna have nonstop wildlife experiences tonight. She got the tarp Maggie set up while I was gone. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, just went down to filter water. Like Had to do about a mile round trip. She said she ruined something. Here is the view around camp, which or the view from camp, which is just amazing. Look at these meadows. There's all the way around. That's our spur trail right there. Maggie, what do you think of today? I like today. Yeah? I was. That's good though. Every day our packs get lighter. No, I think I just had it set right on my hips. Yeah. Yeah, I packed it. I packed my pack horribly today. So, just gonna make that change. All right. See what we see. Hear what we hear. Well, we have dinner. Yeah. You're sitting in the perfect spot. <laughs> <laughs> Caught me at a bad time. Oh, did you hear that? Hmm? Okay, bags are hung. It wasn't that easy because there's a lot of uh, trees and stuff. I got tangled the first time. All right, so Maggie's gone to bed. So I'm just sitting out by the fire, listening to the sounds of the jungle.
Good morning. We have made it to day four. Um, it was a quiet night. It's cold right now. Uh, so I was looking through the binoculars and way up on the ridge top, I saw a big bull elk that was following a female it was really cool it's just like a dramatic outline of the two animals and then the bull elk went back down over the top of the ridge throughout this trip i've been surprised i haven't seen a grizzly track um but just last night I went out there to film uh, like a wide shot of this uh, campsite and just out here in 20 yards, first grizzly track I've ever seen. So just outside our uh, campsite. Plan for today, uh, just to hike about five miles further to 6Y6, uh, right on the river. And uh, man, I don't want to leave this site, but that side's supposed to be beautiful too, but I could do this all day. Sit here and just listen to the sound, see what comes out. We're hearing elk sounds like crazy. Right there. You know why those sound like dinosaurs? Because those are the exact sounds, creepy, <laughs> that uh, Jurassic Park used uh, for their dinosaur sounds, so. Wow, they're just going back and forth right now. <sighs> Sounds are amazing right now. We definitely heard a barking sound too. I don't know if that's a coyote or a wolf. All right, it's time to head deeper into thoroughfare to 6Y6. All right, we're taking a break after our first real Ford of the day. It actually felt good. It's a warm out. Check out those mountains behind me there. Snow-capped peaks. All this precipitation we're getting, they're getting snow up in the high areas. Uh, that'll be us a couple days from now. Trying not to get our feet wet here back-to-back -back crossings, we just dried off. We have our first wolf footprints of the trip. Man, those prints are always bigger than you would expect them to be.
So this is a legitimate willow tunnel. Not an ideal place to hike ever. Hey now. Hey there. Coming through. Head on a swivel in a place like this. Trail for 6y6 to right along here. We go down to the river, set up camp. We made it to 6y6. You want to know how big an elk is? Whoo! Look at that. Whoo! <laughs> Luxury items. Maybe the most important item though. Mm. Either this or whiskey. I bought two pints of whiskey. And it was devastating not to bring the third. <laughs> oh, for a shot? <laughs> that was a strike. Approaching night four here. Uh, we're a little beat up. Tomorrow, uh, we're going out to Mariposa Lake, and I think it's anywhere from like 1,800 to 2,200 feet of elevation gain. What has been your favorite part of the thoroughfare? Mm, I liked so far day three into day four. Why is that? Had nice weather. Oh, that's right. Had very expensive views. Did you say expensive? Expensive. Oh, expensive, yes. <laughs> um, the meadows, very pretty. Again, like just wide open, beautiful meadows. I was a little bit frustrated walking through them. Yeah, you're just kind of stuck in like a little tiny yeah, you have to like, like crevice. Yeah. The other and yeah, it's easy to like roll an ankle or something. Stumble the entire right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are wolf tracks right here beneath our site. Like go over the log. What do you have? Beef stroganoff. I'm having uh, spaghetti and meat sauce. I had something important to say, but I completely forget it now. So. Go on. Oh, I can't go on. I forgot what I was going to say. It's pretty nice. I'm having some whiskey. Mm. Maggie's not, thank God. I don't know. I'm ready for my beer when I get back. Oh, my God. The food, what's very depressing is that the food talk started on day two, I think. Was it day two? Or was it, I think it was day two. When we were fantasizing about pizza. But yeah, uh, right now. We... I want to be in the car, family size bag of Cheetos. Family size bag of Cheetos. Watermelon sour patch kids and a cold beer. Before That's it? Get, before oh. Before we get to the restaurant. On the way to the <laughs> restaurant where there will be pizza, cheeseburgers, um, like those pints of beer you get in Germany, or like the big ones, what are, what are those called? Are they pints? Um, the big ones. He's checking out how big an elk actually is. That's a bull elk. Good morning, uh, day five from 6y6. 
today we're gonna pack up and head out pretty early. We have a big day. Uh, I think we have to cross a few rivers. Um, and then we gotta uh, hike up to Mariposa Lake. It was pretty quiet last night. It was an owl uh, kind of hooting for a while. Maggie said she thought she heard something uh, go through the water. There is what looks like a, a like something's been dug up down in the sand down there. Tell you what, I'm gonna miss this spot. There's just, you're surrounded by meadows. Just being around here, there's huge meadows everywhere that is just perfect for wildlife and things to bed down. Uh, even across the river here, there's willows, but in terms of, you know, you might have an idea when you're at a campsite where wildlife might come from. Uh, here, you have no idea. It could come from the river, uh, across the river, and these willows. Um, there's actually these big rolling hills before these mountains here uh, that, you know, I could totally picture seeing every type of animal walking around on. And then we're just completely surrounded by meadows on all sides of these, uh, this little like thicket of trees. Uh, so, you know, last night we were hearing elk. I think they're mostly back in this way. I did hear when I was sitting by the fire, just quick, like distant sound what sounded like two cats, like, fighting. I don't know what that was. Um, but, yeah, this is pretty wild out here. So that was amazing. Heard one howl, and then soon after that, the whole pack started howling. Uh, just amazing. Sounds like they're done. But I mean, we have those, those wolf tracks right in front of the uh, campfire area. I can still hear them. Sounds like, sounds like they're fighting. <laughs> wow. All right, we're all packed up. Time to head out. Uh, I'm gonna try and record this in my memory as long as I can as probably the coolest campsite I'll ever have. Uh, for me, I'm a nature guy. So being out here and uh, possibility of experiencing anything with the wolf tracks and the grizzly dig right over here here an elk all night uh, and, and just capping it off with that uh, the, the pack of wolves over there howling and kind of fighting and barking that was amazing so heading out from 6x6 six six, now we're going up to Mariposa Lake right. we're heading out Mariposa <laughs> Lake there you go <laughs> <laughs> This guy, oh, he's carrying more weight than I am. It's crazy you just run into stuff like this out here. Okay, so right now I'm heading off alone uh, to the Thoroughfare Ranger Station. Uh, it's about a mile and a half round trip. Maggie wasn't feeling it and I don't blame her. Her feet are bothering her a little bit. And we still have a ton of mileage to do in elevation. While I'm out here, I'm trying to make it quick. So I'm on my pack. I want to see the ranger station uh, where it's basically 30 miles in any direction from any road, which makes it by far the most remote. And there it is. Thoroughfare 
Fair Ranger Station, uh, the message book. Oh my god. This goes back to 2011. Someone drew a picture of the ranger station. Don't forget to put on bear spray. Put on bear spray. This guy's name is Gus. Now that is a wilderness cabin. The wilderness cabin. All right, I gotta get back. I don't want Maggie to start worrying. Uh, this was an amazing experience. I'm in the most remote place in uh, the continental United States. So, awesome. Now what that is, grizzly claw marks on the tree. All right, I'm back with Maggie. And we are going to Mariposa Lake, 9.8 miles. Let's go. wild it is that we're on day five here we've seen one person i don't think i've ever had an experience like that in my whole life uh, we both work in manhattan so it's a little different what if when i did that my bear spray exploded <laughs> <laughs> i challenge anybody you know step outside your comfort zone get the hell out into the wilderness experience something like this Every time I look down the mud, it's just grizzly tracks and wolf tracks, even right here. Hey, bear. Then you go through these tall willows, grizzly tracks and everything. That was the sketchiest uh, moment of the trip. But now we gotta cross this. All right, just crossed the Yellowstone. And now according to my uh, Garmin, about six miles, hopefully that's accurate, up to Mariposa Lake. Um, and that's all elevation. It's kind of tough no matter what. What we just did was just tough because it was, uh, you couldn't see the trail, so overgrown, it's all thick willows and sticks. And then the trail itself that's underneath is all mud, which is filled with grizzly tracks. So I think, I could be wrong, but I think uh, that we're gonna go up this way to, uh, uh, Mariposa Lake, and it's probably back there. And then to Ocean Plateau is this. We're gonna hike that all the way down uh, to the southeast arm of Yellowstone Lake tomorrow. So we are following uh, grizzly tracks for the last couple thousand feet, I'd say. Uh, kind of worrisome. This is what I mean. Right there. And they just uh, been continuing on the trail. There's another one. Yo, bear. So I just noticed that it's a grizzly with cubs. Uh, so we're being extra vigilant, extra loud. Hey now, on every corner. Cause you don't want to run into that. They look relatively fresh too. There's an elk in there. 
saw for a second him run away. That is a welcome sign. Things got scary there for a bit. We've made it. All right, so we have finally made it to Mariposa Lake. Barely. So today was um, wild. It was, uh, it was challenging and it was wild. I probably ended up doing it about 15 miles today. And so this day kind of just had everything. It, it, we had thoroughfare, meadows. We did a ton of river crossings. Um, we saw our first grizzly prints. Saw a ton of wolf tracks. Um, and we climbed, I think it was about 2,000 feet um, in elevation, at least from where we were at 6 by 6 today. And for the half, half the trail, we were following wolf tracks. Uh, clear as day up the trail We were kind of behind time-wise, so we started like rushing it was a little stressful and uh, And our packs are just killing us. We both have heavy packs and that today was the hardest day with the the weight of the packs um, because of the elevation and uh, Once we got up here um, to this area um, We started seeing grizzly tracks um, on the trail just the whole way the whole way and then once I got a little closer to Mariposa Lake, I realized she has cubs. It's a sow with cubs. Uh, she was like, worst case scenario. Uh, and then we struggled. I, my GPS, my Garmin, just so you know, Garmin uh, does not have the accurate campsite for Mariposa Lake. Uh, so I was looking all around on the other side of the lake, and it was already like 7 o'clock. Sunset's at like 7.15. Um, I know that there's a, a sow with cubs walking around, and... Uh, so I was, I was kind of panicking a little bit, like starting to think about what are we going to set up anywhere? Just hang our food on a tree and set up before it's pitch black. Uh, saw a bull elk, but we got here with like five minutes to spare. We could still kind of see things set up. And we're finally relaxing. Um, can't have campfires here. So this might be the end of, uh, day five. If, uh, nothing crazy happens, hopefully it doesn't. Good morning from Mariposa Lake and welcome to day six. Heard all kinds of noises uh, last night, but for the most part it was quiet. Because of the fact that we were rushed um, to kind of get here before dark, uh, I wasn't really like talking about how beautiful the meadows were uh, with like the, the sun that was setting, the way it was hitting the meadows, everything was just gold and lit up and it was gorgeous. I thought we were pretty secluded out at 6Y6 and 6C3, and we were probably the most secluded I've ever been, but this is next level. We just are all alone out here, all alone with grizzlies and wolves. Typical Tuesday. A squirrel is like mocking that joke. It's making fun of that one. Me and red squirrels don't get along. Filtering some nasty Mariposa Lake water right now. Uh, we gotta hit the trail. There's an elk right there. <laughs> it's getting really blurry to zoom in like this. Alright, we're all packed up. We're heading out. Today the plan is to 
continue down the South Boundary Trail about a mile, then we're going to connect to the Two Ocean Plateau Trail, follow that all the way over the top of the plateau for about 13 miles, and then drop down to our campsite on the southeast arm of Yellowstone Lake to fan at 6A3. Look what the beavers did here. They created a dam. That water that still is like three or four feet above uh, the marsh right there. So I'm a huge fan of beavers. They're kind of like keystone species. Uh, and they're, those are species that basically affect an entire ecosystem. It's like a trickle down effect. This is water that would typically just move through and in a drought it would dry up. But when the drought hits, because of these dams that they build, it stores all this water. Um, for the vegetation and for the wildlife and for people and we like eliminated almost all beavers for their fur they're making those stupid hats uh, back when we were idiots and when we also eliminated uh, about 70 million bison except for a couple thousand that existed here in uh, Yellowstone National Park but bison and beavers are, are species that need to be um, brought back big time but most importantly this stores water especially uh, now with climate change and everything heating up and these massive droughts that we see, uh, beavers are absolutely critical. This is the trail. Thanks to the beavers, I take it all back. So we're hiking through here. Just all oh, water. Oh, my feet are freezing off. Oh. Okay, we're through it. Expanse of meadows here on the plateau. Got some bear scat there on the trail. Here's our first view of Yellowstone Lake, way up here on the plateau. All right, we're taking a break here at campsite, uh, whatever, I don't know, on the Two Ocean Plateau, the only campsite out here. We still have a ways to go. Uh, I'm having some hot soup. Maggie's having what? Nuts. She's having nuts. So a lot of places in here it's just impossible to follow the trail on the Two Ocean uh, Plateau Trail. Because of the shadow, you can see something here. Okay, looks like the trail goes through an endless maze of willows. So, here we go. Look at the trail behind Maggie. It's all mud. Maggie has agreed to name our first child Willow. <laughs> she says she never wants to see another Willow again, including anyone named Willow. Grizzly did to this log, trying to get the termites inside. This is old school Yellowstone right here. So you can see it. 
It's not boundary. We made it down to the lake, and we have my favorite to greet us, a loon. We have made it. It was an epic day, back-to-back -back epic days. Um, but when you're looking for a prize at the end of uh, a very difficult hike, this is it. So I'm proud of, uh, proud of Maggie. She persevered through a lot today. Got loons out there. Got Yellowstone's white pelicans out there. It's the loon. Uh, out that way is a thoroughfare. So we came down uh, that coastline. Wow, I love the sounds of loons. Um, <laughs> Maggie, we're fully getting loon sounds tonight. So this is the area right next to camp. So look at the thoroughfare, turret mountain in the background. fire going. It is incredible here, man. This makes the whole trip worth it. Today, much like yesterday, was difficult. Uh, I think we did about 13 or 14 miles, and they weren't easy miles, but we got up over the plateau, and then it's just open expanse of meadows, and that was gorgeous. Um, and then coming down, uh, I think it was okay, but then when you get to the bottom, it was a lot of route finding. Uh, the, following the trail was really difficult. Um, and for just miles and miles, you're just going through like willows and mud. But to end up here in this site uh, is just so incredibly rewarding. Uh, we were just saying, I, I think this is the best campsite I've ever had. I say that all a lot, but I think this has to be. Um, I'm gonna try to remember this forever and uh, always come back to this when I need to. Might have been the best sleep of the whole trip. Maggie's basically dead. Uh, we have another big day today. Her feet are kind of shot. Uh, so, and I'm not in great shape right now either. I am beat up. But I think we have about 13 miles to do today. But first, coffee. You're gonna enjoy this. All right, we're packed up. Uh, gonna leave 683. It's probably our favorite campsite, right? It's beautiful. It's amazing. We needed this. This is great. Uh, Everything got to, was perfect about yeah, the site. Got to relax a little bit. Um, and uh, got some river crossings today. Got some good mileage to do again. And uh, time to get day seven underway. Let's go. I don't know if you can see all the birds out there to the left. In front of us, there's probably about 10 different species at least.
Bald Eagle. Got a lot of grouse in there. Their wings are, see, their wings are so loud. If you don't know they're there, it's scared the crap out of you. This one's never seen a man as fat as me. Oh boy. I had a dream last night that I was eating a homemade cake. Oh my God. When we get out, I'm gonna have pizza, cheeseburgers, and sliders, even though it's the same thing. Beer, I'm gonna have cake. I'm gonna have to find a cake somewhere. And uh, for breakfast, I'm gonna have a thousand eggs. Thousand eggs, bacon, ham, cheese, lots of cheese, and chocolate chip pancakes. I may just uh, dedicate the rest of my life to eating. Okay, we are back on the thoroughfare trail, heading north now. Oh look, there is our food bowl from 5e1, our second night. I don't know how I missed this last time when we were here, but clear as day, grizzly claw marks on this tree. Maggie hiking, and that's one last look into the thoroughfare. Well, 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 we meet again. We're now off trailing up this steep hillside. All right, we have made it to our final campsite of the trip, 5E3. We have another beautiful shoreline here. Yellowstone Lake, which is very calm at the moment. All right, we've got a fire going. Maggie set up the tent. Uh, we're cooking dinner. We probably logged over 70 miles already, or close to it. So our bodies are beat. Uh, thing is, when you get to these campsites, it's, it's rushed. It's like you're hiking the whole day, and then even when you get to the campsite, you don't stop. As soon as you get there, there's things to do. Hang the food, set up the tent, get a fire going, cook food. Because uh, you're normally racing against sunlight uh, or you know rain that you can see coming in. But even though our bodies are beat and uh, it's all this go, 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 that's part of it. I love it and I'm gonna miss it, big time. So at the moment, uh, we're kind of surrounded by thunderstorms on both sides. I think it's only a matter of time before we get drenched here. Um, I actually love thunderstorms. Um, but the problem is there's a lot of dead trees around and those storms, when they come in, they bring in a lot of wind. So I think we chose the one site, right? With like no dead trees. Um, there are so many tempting sites here, but every one of them has an epic dead tree over it. Uh, so if we're lucky, we'll just get to listen to thunder all night. That'd be cool. 
see a spot like this and you think, oh my God, that's the perfect tent site. And then you look up at these very dead trees. All right, we're hiding in the trees, <laughs> eating here. I love the thunderstorm, but it's the wind that kind of scares me with all these dead trees. Ooh, baby. Hot chocolate in the thunderstorm. Woo! Check out these waves now. Surf's up. Um, <laughs> that is really bright. <laughs> okay, so, God, does it look normal? Huh? What are you, are you doing something? Because I yes. can all I see is the spotlight. <laughs> yes, it, does. Um, it looks like I'm getting abducted <laughs> right now. Okay. All right, so it's uh, <laughs> night seven. It's the last night of the trip. We got a pretty good thunderstorm. That was actually pretty cool. The only downside is that, you know, it's raining, so I can't really have a fire. So this is probably the closing shot. Um, man, uh, there's something, uh, sad, but also like extremely exciting about this meeting last night. I know Maggie and I are both dying for real food. Um, but I also know that, uh, the rest of the year I'm going to be in the opposite of this place. So I really have to enjoy it as well while it's happening. Even this right now, unless something crazy happens, this is the end of, uh, night number seven, in Yellowstone National Park. All right, good morning on day eight. Day eight, that's crazy. <laughs> all right, we are all packed up and it's time to leave campsite 5E3 and begin our 13 mile trek back to the trailhead. Just passed 5v4, which means we're right in the area where I think we had to pass that bison on the way in on day two. We better not run into him again. He doesn't care where we have to be. He just does not care. We have made it back to our first campsite we had on this trip a week ago, 5e6. All right, we have stopped here for lunch at 5e7. These amazing meadows here. Um, but our feet are soaking wet. We're changing our socks, having some food, and then it's the final stretch back to the trailhead. Maggie and her hot tea. Maggie, what are you most excited for? Shower. A warm shower. Shower? Mm -hmm. Over food? 
Yeah, I think I kind of passed the hungry part. Now I'm just sick and cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, that's it for lunch. It's getting really cold, so this is it. Final few miles back to the trailhead. Six. Let's go. The side of Yellowstone Lake has been decimated, I think, by the 1988 fires. They were just humongous in this area. We actually just got our first hail of the trip. Hiking out today, no reason to change into water shoes or anything like that. Probably stayed with myself about an hour. Man, all those river crossings, it really does eat up time. So we're moving well, not having to change shoes. I can smell the trailhead. I can also smell myself, but mostly I can smell the trailhead. All right, we have done it. Woo! I'm so proud of Maggie, she persevered through a lot. My back is probably destroyed forever and Maggie may never walk again, yeah. uh, but we did it. I'm proud of my, all the trail finding. There's a lot of route finding, turns out. Well, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Appreciate it.